Well, acceptable are in principle all cell therapies, all therapies that actually work, which means that provide a tangible benefit for patients, uh, which is greater than the risk that any therapy imposes on patients. Um, unacceptable, conversely, are all the purported therapies for which there is no evidence for a benefit or a benefit ratio that is favorable to the patient and are nonetheless proposed directly to the public, often on a uh, commercial basis which may be overt or covert, and this kind of uh, situations are clearly not acceptable because they expose patients to an inordinate amount of risk and also because the patients that are exposed to this inordinate amount of risk are typically the most vulnerable ones. Those who carry diseases for which there is no definitive cure or remedy and are seducted by the charm of the world stem cell which is very often cynically used um, to convey what is in essence a, an advertisement for something which is simply not there yet. Well, first of all, researchers um, should be clear that the development of therapies is not just on their shoulders. Um, scientists have the, mount, the monumental task of making breakthrough. But developing a therapy involves a number of other aspects, which are typically presented to the public as the business of scientists, but this is very often not the case. Uh, translating a scientific breakthrough into an application that is medically relevant typically takes many years of effort, and this kind of effort is specific. It's not the same thing as making a discovery. It involves um, developing technologies rather than scientific knowledge uh, in the most effective way, in the most cost-effective way, because the other aspect is that uh, any development of technology, including medical technologies, if you wish, which are therapies or medicine, what we refer to as medicines to be put on the market as commodities, involve a significant amount of investment. Now the problem is that these other aspects to which we could add uh, the regulatory issues, the legal issues, are often not presented to the public um, and the scientists are in a way left alone in the eye of the public which say, typically say, well, how long is going to take for you guys to develop what I need? Uh, and this is many times a misrepresentation of things because many times the breakthroughs are not there and it will take time to get them. Many times the breakthroughs could be there but would need a significant effort to be developed into applicable technologies. And many times the breakthrough and the technologies may be there but the investment may not be there. All this is what makes the development of therapies a difficult task. Um, people should be aware that specifically in the area of, of cell therapies, um, Rome is never f done in, a, in one day. Uh, the amount of time that elapsed between not the discovery of stem cells, but the very notion that blood cells were made in the bone marrow in a reasonable clinical application which was to become one of the most impressive breakthrough in medicine in the 20th century, which is bone marrow transplantation, the amount of time that elapsed is about 70 years. And curiously enough, people started trying to translate the, the, the discovery of bone marrow cells as progenitors of blood cells by feeding crude bone marrow to patients. So simply finding that the route of administration was not the digestive tract, it was the venous system and the blood circulation took 70 years and should I say 
one world war which ended with the astounding effects of ionizing radiation. Well, first of all, I would say that um, it is not true in any way, shape, or form that there are effective stem cell therapies waiting to be approved and actually waiting five to ten years to be approved. This is simply a misrepresentation of facts. As we speak, there are only two or three types of true stem cell based treatments that are proven to be effective in patients. Besides bone marrow transplants in its many varieties, transplantation of epidermis for burns or other extensive damage to the epidermal surface, transplantation of corneal prosthesis made ex vivo with uh, limbal stem cells. Um, of these three, there is only the, the corneal strategy, which is in the process of being ultimately validated, but has already been used in patients. So all therapies that are, in fact, in a formal process of development um, are, in one way or another, already accessible to patients through the way of clinical trials. But the much caution should be exerted not in not conveying to the public the notion that formal approval, formality, uh, regulatory bureaucracy is in a way standing in the way to patient success to therapy. That is not true. Patients have full access to all therapies that are fully validated and this is different from regulating the access to therapies that are not fully validated. In that case, nothing is being prevented from patients' use because there is no effective therapy available until there is an effective therapy available, which means a formally validated therapy, which means something that has met the standards of uh, evidence-based medicine, which is the only tool us as the public and the patients can count on to figure out whether a proposed therapy is actually a benefit for him or her. The other thing that I would say is that patients should be clear that um, there are, as we speak, diseases that were almost invariably lethally short term uh, when I was a medical student, which was a long time ago, but was not a century ago. Uh, many of those diseases are today cured in 95% of the patients that are properly treated for that effect. Uh, we would have never gotten to that point if not through the path of rigorous clinical and preclinical studies which unavoidably take time. And another thing that I would say to patients, because dealing with patients, I am sure that they understand this point. Um, clinical research, development of a therapy is done with patients, is done with the contribution of patients. It is done hopefully in the benefit of those patients that participate in the study, but it is also done in, in the prospective benefit of all patients with the same condition that do not have access to that particular study or may not even be born at the time that the study is conducted. And that is because developing a remedy for a serious disease is something that takes time because it, it involves a large amount of societal forces, not only scientists, but enterprises, governments, uh, lawmakers, regulators. Uh, this societal effort is also extremely costly and expensive. 
And it is only taken on because the endeavor is of general value and general interest. It is, in principle, for all the patients that can benefit from a breakthrough or an advance, and not just for that particular patient at that time who happens to suffer for that particular disease.